Welcome everybody to the final installment of moving the playhead within the Premiere Pro timeline. In this video we're going to look at how you can move the player with a constant set of seconds. Grab a jug of water and let's get cracking. Right, so moving the player uh, within Premiere Pro, we've looked at numerous ways that you can do that, um, but that really needs to be in context of you know a workflow. Um, so within the Automator Plus uh, extension that we've designed and developed, uh, you are actually able to add a lot of these automations that we've discussed uh, just as a, an actual automation. Um, and an example of how that can start being useful is if you want to do some shot selection and you can move back and forth uh, for a different number of seconds or to the next edit point, next marker, um, and actually move your clips up onto track one, track two, track three, right? So that's the, the usage of that. Um, in this video, we're going to look at how you can then move that player for the seconds, right? So we've got an automation for that, uh, but we're gonna look at how you can implement the actual extend script and then how we can add that to the Automator Plus as well. As always, code is on GitHub, uh, so be sure to check out our GitHub repo. Any things that you might want us to look at, go ahead and open a new issue on there, drop them in the comments, um, and we'll start getting going on teaching you how to create these automations and write extend script so that you don't have to sit and do boring things, but you can get going with the creative stuff. Okay, let's jump into it, let's jump into it. Uh, we've got this with seconds, a uh, little extend script file, and basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move the player left and right given how many seconds you want to move left and right. So super simple actually. Uh, we've looked at most of these methods, uh, but this time we're actually going to use current player position seconds. So instead of using ticks, uh, we actually want to use seconds this time uh, so that we can specify the seconds to move and not have to specify ticks and have to do all of that math. So if we hop over to the documentation over here uh, and we look at the sequence object, uh, you'll see that the method that we're using, this get sequence or get current set player position, get player position, um, it actually returns a time object, right? So here you can go. Uh, and the time object, we've chatted a bit about it, uh, but this is this nice little object that Extend Script has got that makes it possible to switch between ticks and seconds. Cool. That all being said, uh, so this uh, get prior position, that is the whole time object, but I'm just interested in the seconds attribute of that. I'm storing that in our current player position seconds variable, creating our seconds we want to move and calculating this new seconds. But now we want to set the player position. So in order to do that, we need ticks. So how do we get there? Well, we're gonna create this new time object, this new player position. And then I can go and say, cool, that new player position object, this guy, let's set its seconds equal to this new player calculated seconds. Um, so on the channel, we've discussed uh, the nuances with ticks and seconds. So seconds are always in numbers. Um, so there's no hassle for me doing this current pro uh, seconds plus seconds to move. Uh, that's always in number land, life's good. But if you're working with ticks, just know that those are in strings. So if you try and add strings and numbers, things might go a bit haywire. Cool, uh, but when I do this and I actually set this new player position to seconds, then it will calculate the ticks for me automatically. Right, so I'm just add a little edit uh, breakpoint in my VS Code over here, and let's check out what is happening over here. Cool, so we've got this new player position um, in my debug over here, boom, boom, boom. New player position, and you see we've just initialized an empty object over here, right? Line 19 has just given us this little default object. But as soon as I set the seconds, then you'll see the seconds as well as the ticks update, and that's sort of the magic that that we want to use uh, this new this time object for. Because now we can just go and say, hey, we want to set the player position to this new player, and because that's now a time object, we can just access this ticks attribute of it. Awesome, boom, and there you see it did actually move a little bit forward, there we go. So we're moving forward four seconds. So again, if you want to go and wrap all of this into 
and automation within the uh, Automator Plus, uh, you can just go ahead and say, hey, we got some extend script that we want to execute. Here we go, dump all of that in there. Currently it's doing forward with four seconds. So let's say move forward with four. I'm just gonna assign this on L and let's make a little player group over here. Cool, cool, cool. And boom, there we are moving forward with four. Uh, if I change that to minus four, then obviously we will be moving back with four. Awesome.